about to open a can. So a little while ago, we decided to take the FX 8350, that's AMD's new 8-core, new-ish 8-core, and put it up against the similarly priced 3570K that everyone on Build a PC. Hey guys, on Build a PC, this is the thing that almost everyone recommends for a gaming rig right now, this one right here. Well, we put it up against the 8350 and we discovered something very interesting. We discovered that the 8350 wins 9 times out of 10. And a lot of the benchmarks that I've been looking at online don't seem to show this. And so we were all shocked here at the studio and we ran the tests again and then again. And then we decided to test it in streaming. And we discovered that in streaming, it destroys. Like, it, like it's, it's even bigger. The, the, the delta's even bigger. So I'm kind of curious right now as to why most of the websites out there so far from my experience that I've seen, only benchmark a few games. And a lot of times they benchmark games like Crisis, in which the Intel does slightly um, beat, you know, the FX, and Battlefield 3, which the Intel barely beats the FX. But we started testing it with a lot of games, and it really hurt my head. So then I was like, you know what, let's get the 3770K. Put it up against that, too. It beat it a lot. So then I was like, you know what, let's get my socket 2011-3820K, and benchmark it against that. Let's just go straight to the results because I did these benchmarks over and over for like three days because I did not expect the um, 8350 to be this fast and I'm quite impressed. The benchmarks in this video are all going to be gaming and streaming games because I want to talk about gaming. This is a very good CPU for gaming, especially at the price point. You're getting more for your dollar and that's... um. I didn't expect it. So after this video, you're going to see some AMD build videos to honor the fact that this beat these guys in a lot of the tests. I mean, it's, and plus you're getting more for your money. So just put these over here for now. Ladies, there all this. I'm kind of frustrated about this. First off, let's talk about the architecture. It's slightly different. Uh, whereas with these, you have four cores, four cores, and they all share one large pool of L3 cache. With this one, you've got one large pool of L3 cache and you've got L2 cache. There's a two megabyte pool of L2 cache for each pair of cores. So you have four, four of those. So it works a little bit differently and it might be better at distributing tasks around. Let's just talk about the benchmark, shall we? All the tests we did with, with the exact same graphic card, 7870. First off, we benchmarked Crisis 2. We did everything at 1080p and at 1440p. So starting off, Crisis 2, 1080p on the 8350. 29.84 frames per second. 3570K, 39.52 frames per second. 3770K, 39.52 frames per second. 3820, 35.64 frames per second. So as you can see there, um, the other CPUs, the Intel CPUs, do better job in Crisis. Let's go to 1440p, which is 2560 by 1440 for you guys out there with the 27-inch monitors or the 30-inch monitors that are, you know, 16 by 9. At 1440p with the FX 8350, 20.96 frames per second. 3570K, 22.76 frames per second. 3770K, 22.76 frames per second. 3820, 23.67 frames per second. All right. Next up, Crisis Warhead at 1080p with the 8350 from AMD. 35.64 frames per second. 3570K, 26.84 frames per second. 3770K, 38.44 frames per second. 3820, 1080p, 26.84 frames per second. So as you can see in Crisis, the Intel's beat, the AMD. Now we tested it with XSplit because a lot of you guys stream out there. There's a lot of people out there streaming and a lot of people out there recommending specs and I see you guys on Build a PC all day long. The default seems to be the 3570K. And if someone doesn't recommend that, a lot of you guys make fun of them and that's not cool because a lot of you guys have not been getting your information from good sources or you're just fanboys, and we don't like fanboys. We like AMD, we like Intel, we like either part that's the best for the job, if that makes sense. So let's talk about XSplit, and we did Crisis Warhead, and we put it up against um, these three here, the 3570K and the 3820. So Crisis Warhead with XSplit, the FX 8350, 26 frames per second, even. 3570K, 24.92 frames per second. On the 3820K running at 1080p, 26.44 frames per second. 
All right, we decided to adjust the resolutions because most of you guys don't stream at 1080p. You lower it to, you know, like 1600 by 900 or 720p or something like that. Crisis Warhead, XSplit, 1600 by 900 with the AMD FX 8350, 39.28 frames per second, 3570K, 31.04 frames per second, and the 3820, 36.6 frames per second. Last but not least, 720p. A lot of people stream at 720p. That's cool with me. And again, these settings are all maxed out. Everything maxed out, filters on 8x, everything. 720p with the 8350 and XSplit streaming to the web, 48.28 frames per second. 3570K, 720p streaming to the web with XSplit, 37.12 frames per second. And the 3820 was 42.88 frames per second. So the interesting thing here is, is that um, the Intel, um, the Intel CPUs beat it when you're talking like you know just straight up gaming, but when you're streaming with Crisis, this beats it. Now let's go to all the rest of the benchmarks. That's all the streaming tests that we're gonna do. I just wanted to show you that the extra cores seem to come in handy with XSplit, so that's pretty cool. Moving on to the next test, which is Black Mesa. We tested the exact same part of the game over and over with this, uh, running at 1440p on the FX 8350. We got 188 frames per second. On the 3570K, 1440p, 121 frames per second. 3770K, 1440p, 111.92 frames per second. Now 1080p we, uh, with the... Um, AMD FX 8350, 262.6 frames per second. 1080p with the 3570K, 196.32 frames per second. With the 3770K, 197.44 frames per second. And with the 3820, 196.32 frames per second. Moving right along to Metro 2033. You guys are going to be surprised by this because I was surprised by this and I ran the test several times because I was freaking surprised. 1440p, Metro 2033, AMD FX 8350, 20.44 frames per second. 3570K, Metro 2033, 1440p, 12.80 frames per second. 3770K, 12.96 frames per second. Now we did it at 1080p. And at 1080p, Metro 2033, was 36.44 frames per second on the AMD FX 8350. 3570K at 1080p, 21.2 frames per second. 3770K, 27.48 frames per second. And the 3820, 21.32 frames per second. Next up, we did Trine 2. On the AMD FX 8350 at 1440p, 36.84 frames per second. That's, this is one of the first CPUs uh, that I've seen that will actually play Trine 2 at 1440p at a playable frame rate with an, uh, with an AMD 7870. 3570K, 23.6 frames per second. 3770K, 27.84 frames per second. Moving on to 1080p with the AMD FX 8350, we have 58 frames per second in Trine 2. 1080p with the 3570K, 38.80 frames per second. 3770K, 47.28 frames per second. And the 3820, 31.96 frames per second. The, 30, uh, the 3820 is like up and down. Sometimes it's higher than the 3770, sometimes it's lower. That's a little weird. So uh, that's, um, that's what we did for the gaming benchmarks. As you can see, it's faster in a lot of games. And the games in which it excels, like Metro and Trine, it kills. It just absolutely kills. Other than that, it's really close. And the crazy thing is, is it's similarly priced to the 3570K. In fact, it's like $30 to $40 cheaper. And I've seen this thing on sale for $50 cheaper. So it's a head scratcher. Every once in a while, you find one of these things on sale for about the same price as this, but this one's faster. It also feels really snappy in Windows. And we haven't completed all of our productivity benchmarks and everything like that. We're going to make a separate video for that. I wanted to make one just for this and streaming because it's really, really intense. Now, the system that we use for this for the AMD FX 8350, we have the MSI 990FX motherboard, the top of the line one, the one that won all the world records. However, the BIOS had been nerfed and we weren't able to do as much of an overclock as we wanted to. It's pretty easy to take this thing to five gigahertz, like really easy, you just have to up the voltage. And they wouldn't let us up the voltage enough, trying to get to 1.5. Um, all of this, we used um, a data memory. It was at uh, 2133 megahertz. And on the 3820 here, 
uh, that I was using is using some Gelid memory, but that's also clocked at uh, 2133 megahertz. And uh, the memory speed is very important for gaming. The cast latency is not nearly as important for gaming. Uh, it's more important for like rendering and stuff, or, or like productivity and um, After Effects and stuff like that. You want that lower cast latency. The cast latency on the A data was 10. Cast latency on that machine was 11. So, I mean, all in all, I, I can't not recommend the 8350, despite what a lot of people are saying. You like that double negative, didn't you? You're going to cuddle up with my can't not. Yeah, that's right. So right now, if you're building a system and you've got enough money for one of these, why don't you get one of these? I, I, I've not been recommending this until I did the benchmarks myself. I'm kind of like Judas. I had to, I had to put my fingers in the holes in the hands of the AMD. That's a terrible reference. <laughs> Christians will get it. Yeah, you can get a kit with water cooling and it has a copper base. It's uh, not too much more. It's like interesting. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see some sales with this one. Right now, this one came with like a standard, generic little cooling unit in here, uh, but you can find this with a nice AMD brand, and I think, I think Cooler Systems actually makes the cooler, but it's got a copper base, and it's an all-in-one water cooling kit. Kind of looks like a Corsair H80, if you've seen one of those, and the performance is almost identical. And that, you can get them bundled and save some money, so check that out. That's a good way to go, and you can overclock the hell out of these things. The other thing I like about the AMD platform is that the motherboards in the 990FX variety, and even the 970s are pretty nice, and the 870s are pretty nice, but the 990 in particular, are typically more full featured than the Intels. Now, the Intels you have, um, you know, Generation 3, PCI Express. Uh, that doesn't seem to matter that much in games these days. I'm sorry, guys, it really doesn't. It's a higher number. And people go crazy about that. Um, now, the i7s and the i5s are also faster with memory bandwidth, but then again, I, you know, playing games, I, it's fine. Everything's fine. With the AMD platform, you also typically get more SATA 6 ports. You have to pay a lot more for the Intel. For like 150 bucks, you get like all SATA 6 on a lot of the AMD options. So just look around out there, guys. I'm going to be making a build video with this like right now because it's really freaking fast. And um, I feel I feel kind of bad because I've not been recommending this enough. I did not know how fast it was. There's been a lot of bad press. And a lot of you guys on Build-A-PC are, are making fun of people that recommend this. I've tested them both with my hands and I did not believe it. So everybody on the internet, stop whining and complaining. Get what's best. Don't be a fanboy. And if you're just gaming, very good way to go. We'll have our productivity tests very soon. If you have any questions, inbox at techsyndicate.com. And until then, I'll see you guys on the internet. Numbers, fuck. Uh, numbers! <laughs>